Hey, this is Zazaboo from Elevate, and you're about to watch Table of Content, which is streamed live on Twitch. We'd love to see you live, so come by every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit elevatestreams.com for more information. Man, what about good. you guys? Doing pretty good. How are you, Sipon? We're live. How are you? All right. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, quickly, uh, just tell us about your roles in the community and your and your channel, real quick, Mr. Tofu. Why don't you start? Uh, I just like to stop by every stream, throw some bits at some people, <laughs> a little bit to a lot, but I just stream once in a while at night ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh, symphonic oh i uh usually just hang out in people's streams hang out in the discord usually making some sort of sarcastic comment usually pun that's how i roll puns and kappas right <laughs> yep and Burmibe, how about you my friend uh i don't know i pretty much just stream randomly <laughs> uh, no sets good show up to anybody that i can stream Oh, well, yeah, we definitely I, appreciate I also all stream sometimes. Do you? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do watch your stream. <laughs> all right, thank you guys for all your support in the community. And um, speaking of the community, I wanted to remind everybody we have a friend in need right now. Uh, you can see him there in the middle of the screen. That is our good friend Zyroth. Uh, many of you know his situation, and if you can. Please uh, either visit the GoFundMe, which is the Zyroth at ElevateStreams.com link, or uh, if you don't want to donate directly to the GoFundMe, you can send a uh, uh, donation to the PayPal that's listed there. Uh, anything that comes in tonight during the stream or after, just uh, put a note what it's for, and we will make sure that it gets to the GoFundMe. Um, so thank you for anybody that's already donated, and if you can, uh, please help us support our friend. Uh, so I want to jump right into some streaming news, guys. Uh, first on our list here, uh, it, an interesting story is that uh, Twitch has kind of become sort of a, a, a hub for um, uh, live sports, I guess, piracy or live streaming. Uh, during a December 21st uh, World Cup match, uh, it was a Liverpool match, there were about 90,000 plus fans that were watching live on Twitch. Uh, during that time, three of the top 10 live streams that were going on uh, were showing the game. They uh, ranged from 14,000 to 33,000, up to 53,000 viewers on these channels. Um, and with Twitch, we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, Twitch has been sued by a Russian television provider uh, over illegal streaming of the English Premier League. Uh, so online streaming piracy of sports programming kind of seems to be a growing issue. I know it's always kind of been an issue, but now with with these, you know, how easy it is to access live streaming, um, it's becoming kind of a bigger issue. So I kind of attribute it to like, you know, people being upset with, you know, subscription fatigue, that kind of thing. Uh, so Burmai, what do you think uh, these companies could do to offer better services that people are maybe willing to pay for uh, instead of turning to privacy? P piracy, sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Maybe they could uh, offer a wider variety of channels and various things that they just have at their services. Maybe they can make it to where, like, they offer some sort of coupons to long-time uh, subscribers or something. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tofu, do, do you do you watch any sports at all on uh, on Twitch, or have have you ever? No, I only watch sports on TNT or on ESPN where it's normally streamed and sometimes pay-per-view when it's usually you have to pay for it. But I understand why you have to watch it on Twitch because sometimes you don't want to pay for it. Because one time the Manny Pacquiao fight versus, I forgot what his name was, the Anthony guy. But 
Yeah, it was on there illegally, and I'm not saying I watched it, but it was on there. <laughs> I didn't want to pay for the pay per view. Now I know I know a, a a big problem with like baseball is that you'll have these sort of dead zones where you'll be blacked out from multiple regional teams. Uh, Symphonic, I know you're a baseball fan. Have you have you run into that at all? Is that something that you've dealt with? No, my area because I'm local to the Texas Rangers, and we have. It's a cable only channel, the one of the Fox Sports affiliate local mm-hmm. regional channels. And I've never had any um blackout. Even even when the Rangers are playing on like FS1 or ESPN, I'd still was able to get it with uh the cable package we have. Gotcha. But that I, see, I haven't had any issues. That that's been kind of my problem is I I've I cut the cord a long time ago and uh I do like to watch baseball and it's become kind of a problem because it is a regional sports network and I'm blacked out from three local teams. Um, it's one of those things. It's like I pay for MLB TV, uh, the streaming service. And it's like, I would be willing to pay more to have access to my team if they would give me that option, but they don't give me that option. So I can kind of see why people sort of turn to that kind of thing. Uh, but it's, uh, it's definitely a growing problem. Um, so the second story I thought is kind of a weird thing to be on Twitch, but a, uh, a live streamer gave his roommate the ban hammer, uh, during, during a stream. So the, uh, the streamer taste syntax, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, was live on Twitch, uh, with his stream titled kicking a freeloader out of my apartment, not clickbait. She's on her way here now from work. So shortly after his uh, his roommate, as they call her, arrived, I think she was more of a, a well, a friend that was staying on a short term. Uh, shortly after she arrived, the streamer told her uh, he would be taking his space back and asked her to leave immediately. Uh, she asked, you know, can I have a day or two? And he was like, no, I kind of want you out now. Uh, he uh, he explained he hadn't had a roommate in years. Uh, and he really wasn't a fan of it then, and he's not a fan of it now. Um, as for why he streamed the eviction, he explained in a chat comment that I let a friend crash at my place for free, but she thinks she owns the expletive place. Uh, she also locked me out of my own apartment and fed my dog popcorn, making him very sick. I wanted to uh, record this uh, for the record so she doesn't claim any sort of uh, crazy stuff going on. So I figured, why not stream it? Uh, so Symphonic, uh, Twitch has a bunch of guidelines about privacy. Uh, do you feel this in any way violated her privacy? You know, I'm not sure because it's in his like private apartment unit. Because mm-hmm. I guess, I mean, really, I guess that's kind of the only saving grace for him is that it's in his least unit. He's just went about the whole thing in my opinion <laughs> really bad yeah the video he was he was pretty rude about yeah, the yeah, whole it thing was, it was pretty cringe Is uh it- if you can speak up symphonic thank you uh so i thought it was kind of interesting because the 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 privacy guidelines kind of maybe a little bit ambiguous but they uh they were also in a common space in his apartment um so it's not like it was a bedroom or anything like that. It was in the living room. Uh, Mr. Tofu, what did you what did you uh, think about the whole thing? Uh, I find it pretty ridiculous on why would you keep a roommate there for 14 days for no absolutely reason. Like she wasn't paying him or anything. She didn't want him to pay him. And she was willing to pay, but he didn't want the money. And he kicked, him out. She, he, he kicked her out without even giving her like a notice that's just pretty yeah. rude and also we're not really sure if it's true about what he's saying and i think it's uh attacking her privacy just by i mean she's actually like tearing up on stream so yeah i think he's in the wrong part to be honest on in my opinion yeah i felt like he uh he went about it in a very rude kind of way uh Bermai, what do you think about the the whole situation so i the way i think of it is like he does own the place so technically i guess 
the privacy thing could be kind of hit or miss on that. Yeah. But it's just not right to do. I understand being afraid that a roommate you're kicking out might try to do something or claim that you've said or done something that you didn't do. But streaming it live to the entire world to be able to see it is a little too far. Yeah. If you're really that worried, just install a camera. When they walk in, say, hey, I've got this camera recording, and then go into whatever you wanted to tell them. Right. And I mean, in some states, uh, it can actually be uh, illegal to record somebody without them knowing. Um, I think one of the things he he brought up was was that uh, he was afraid if he let her stay too much longer, she might have a right to be there because of squatter laws. So I don't know if that's something that is true or could come into effect in that situation. And it also probably depends on the uh, apartment's lease yeah. terms. Yeah. Is that you're, you sign the lease as you're going to be the only resident. Right. Because I remember in my, when I was in college in my dorm, you can only have someone stay in your room for a max, I think, three straight days mm-hmm. before they're kind of considered a resident and they kind of would have to be paying. Yeah. Now I, I know form. I know I've lived with roommates in the past and it's it's not always been the best thing ever. It's a really good way to wreck a friendship. Um but uh I can I can say honestly after watching those videos when I first read when I first read the article, I was like, Okay, this doesn't seem horrible. He's got some decent gripes. Then I watched the the video and kinda how he went about it and I just felt like it was uh it was a little ridiculous. And this is something we always talk about, like these IRL uh, live streams and kind of the trouble that they seem to bring. Uh, what do you think going forward, guys? I mean, this is this is kind of my question because as streamers and and as uh, I guess kids grow up in this culture of live streaming and things, what do you think the where do you think the balance is as far as with IRL streams? Like, is is there anything that's just too far is there a line with what what really should be live streamed yes i believe so like for example dr disrespect went to a bathroom for some reason and recorded <laughs> himself in a men's bathroom you shouldn't do that that's a no-no so there there's there's one of the lines right <laughs> the obvious yeah. ones oh yeah that's yeah, uh, taking a streamer to a an unintended if you know what i mean yeah that's uh, I, I just think back to like the story. Uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? We talked about the guy live streaming himself uh, driving a hundred miles an hour down the uh, down the highway, and it's like stupid people are kind of always going to do stupid things. But it's like, is it can can we as streamers, I guess, uh, kind of help police those things and and try to maybe teach people not to do these things is this something that you feel like is just going to keep happening or what what do you guys think about that i feel like it's gonna just keep on happening because it's just that one idiotic person that always does it out of like yeah. a whole million people it's like there's, no uh, matter yeah, no matter what you're gonna do there's always going to be those one or two people that are just going to ruin the fun for everyone yeah. So it's just kind of you got to take that into consideration of any sort of action you take from it. It could be one of us one day. <laughs> I hope not. I try to stay away from the IRL streams. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan right. of IRL personally. I, I think one time I, I did I did stream myself for about two minutes cooking some steaks uh, when I first hit affiliate. Uh, so, all right. So our last piece of streaming news, I thought this was really interesting. Uh, it's a kind of a fake. If you don't know what Gil is, I guess I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, currency within the Final Fantasy sort of uh, universe. Uh, so the Twitch channel FFT Battleground has set up tournaments uh, where uh, artificial intelligent bots are playing Final Fantasy tactics against one another, another that the viewers can actually bet fake Gil on. Uh, similar to other bot run channels on Twitch and specifically modeled after something called Salty Bet, uh, where viewers can use fake currency to bet on uh, fighting game matches. Uh, there's tons of chat commands and you can use to interact with the tournament. Uh, to start, you get a thousand gil in your pocket to bet. 
and you'll want to turn that thousand into more by placing bets on a team and earn XP by aligning yourself with a group. So, Mr. Tofu, this question is for you. Uh, will AI uh, tournaments and matches kind of be the future of esports, or do you think they'll at least have a place within that that community? I honestly don't think it's going to be in esports at all, but it will have a place in the community. Like maybe before the matches, they can like have their bets and play on it before the matches starts. Mm -hmm. It'll be more of a casual thing instead of a competitive thing compared to the real esport event that's coming up, in my opinion. Okay. okay. Bermai, do you see do you see this becoming something that maybe people eventually start wagering real money on? I sadly I do think that they will eventually wager real money. Uh if nothing else, they'll just even if they can never cash it in, I can see them going and buying like Maybe somewhere we'll start doing it. A subscription gets you 500 gil, and one bit gets you one gil per bit. And uh, I could just see them trying that, and people start sinking their money into it, trying to get more and more. And it's just going to end up kind of bad for them because, you know, then what do they have to show for it? Does yeah, this event. Okay. Go ahead. And I think at that point, you're going to be entering into some legal territory if you're actually using real money. Yeah. That could uh, that could be problematic for that scene. I mean, if if something exists, people will gamble on it. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's only a matter of time. I just I just wonder, like it, it kind of it's almost very kind of like futuristic Hollywood movie type of thing, where like people are watching robots in a in a kind of a battle royale and they're betting on it you know it's uh could be an interesting uh corner of the uh esports market going forward um so moving on to gaming news um this is pretty interesting uh so sony has skipped e3 for the second year in a row um they uh, they opted out making a presence at E3, and they're kind of leaving everybody sort of scratching their heads on it. I know a lot of people were kind of like last year, like, oh, maybe they're saving their bullets for next year uh, and coming out with something big. Uh, but uh, Sony's declined to comment further beyond its initial statement uh, that it has great respect for the ESA, which is uh, what organizes and presents E3 convention, uh, and cited... Uh, ESA's vision as the determining factor for dropping out for a second year in a row. Uh, Sony's also noted that it would participate in hundreds of consumer events across the globe in 2020. Uh, Symphonic, does, does Sony's absence represent something big on the horizon for them, or does it signal in your mind a mistake uh, that is there for Microsoft and Nintendo to maybe capitalize on? I'm not sure if it's I don't really know if it's going to be on the side of mistake, but I know with the PS5 being like a actual known thing that's being worked on, mm -hmm. they're probably are kind of saving their bullets, as you said, on that uh, tech to really and on their own dime and or on their own time really to really uh, showcase it there because I because I'd imagine with e3 you're limited on time and what all you can do but if you're doing your own thing you can go as all in as you want right and as much as with as much time as you want and i'm guessing with those global events i seem to recall sony did something like what nintendo did with their directs yeah as i would imagine they do that just have one big event that they do that say here's the ps5 and here is its specs and here's its costs and here's a little sneak preview of some big things to look forward to and then down the line just a little more just more and more information as time goes on and like hour long directs that's, yeah I that's, that's kind of what i'm thinking i kind of wondered if it was maybe them playing things close to the chest because of the ps5 uh Bermod, do you are you a playstation guy or an xbox guy uh i have both but i definitely prefer xbox overall Ooh. Okay. <laughs> do you what what do you guys think? I mean, do, is it smart for them, Vermibe, to to kind of do their own thing and do these smaller events or do you think this was a mistake? Uh I mean, as of right now, just looking at it how it is, it seems like a mistake. 
in maybe a year or so, we might find out why they're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it might be proven to us that it's not a mistake. But right now, Microsoft and Nintendo have a huge thing that they can capitalize on, like you said. And it's yeah. just, it won't be worth it for them if they don't do something soon. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a risk that they're willing to take, it seems like. I know, I know in the article uh, that I read about this, uh, they brought up back when the, uh, back on the success of the PS2, they made a similar mistake and kind of went all in with the PS3, had a really high price point. Uh, and that kind of opened the door for Xbox to step in and kind of fill, fill the void of that they left with their, their hubris. Uh, do you think that, uh, that's something that's going to happen this time, Mr. Tofu. Do you feel like this is a mistake? What, what's your take on, uh, on Sony backing up? I don't know. It feels like they have all the hype with the upcoming games coming out. They have The Last of Us 2 coming out, God of War 2 eventually coming out. They have a lot of exclusive IPs compared to Xbox. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo is definitely going to capitalize on it because the biggest competitor to Nintendo is PlayStation because Nintendo is the highest selling console and handheld console in the world and xbox needs to make a comeback because it basically made the same mistake as the ps3 with the xbox one they raised the price a right. lot of no ips whatsoever so yeah they're definitely gonna try to make a comeback xbox and that kind of brings us to our 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 next story here is xbox has uh microsoft's kind of uh, plan to sort of end their console war with Sony. Um, they've uh, this holiday season. They're both planning to launch that next generation console. Xbox has the uh, the Series X and the PlayStation Five, but uh, is coming out as well. Um, though the two consoles kind of compete directly. I mean, they they're they're kind of the two head to head guys. Nintendo sort of fills their own their own niche. Uh, Microsoft is intentionally moving its Xbox business away from direct competition with Sony. Uh, instead of focusing on the console as a replacement for the current one, uh, as, uh, as both they and Sony have done in the past, Microsoft is making a different play uh, with their digital game library that will work across Xbox uh, devices. So, Tofu, what do you think of Microsoft's strategy overall in uh, sort of I guess changing the the way they operate in the industry. Um, do you think they'll find a better niche for themselves to compete, or without trying to go head to head with the PS Five? I think it's good for them to find a better niche to go up against the PS Five because, like, a lot of people have a lot of doubts on them right now, and it's just too hard for them to make a comeback because their IPs. Because why do people buy? Um, consoles it's for the ips nintendo they have the same ip but they improve upon it each year but xbox nobody sees the uh, improvement in each ip but i think they should definitely work on the console as a whole in the digital game library and see what they can do with it because uh they're making psychonauts too which might actually help it because <laughs> yeah, that might actually help what what do you think about uh about the uh, the game library kind of going uh, across across all their platforms, Symphonic. I think it's to their benefit in a way because if you still have an Xbox One and the new console has games that you can still play them, you're still got consumers that are happy with it and you're still able to play it. But it's kind of the uh, in a way you kind of get that free trial of some tech or software is you kind of got a taste of the new software, but if you want to really experience it, that's when they get the money for buying the new, the latest, greatest. So, and, and I kind of wonder with this is how much backward compatibility will there be as far as like the new games that come out for those next gen consoles? Like how far back are we talking? Are they going to be able to, to play? I mean, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I haven't looked into it enough, so I, I kind of wonder about that. Uh, we yeah, have a question. I'm, Go ahead. I'm kind of getting a vibe that, as like especially like the technology for consoles, 
is getting on par to kind of how your personal computers are nowadays yeah. where it's software made for just five years ago was ran well on that hardware but then as time goes on that software can still run in the new stuff maybe a lot better but as time goes on you eventually kind of lose that compatibility as just architecture of the process or whatever just right. changes slightly enough that it's not quite as efficient so Bermai, you said that you're you're an xbox guy are you are you going to be snatching this console up as soon as it comes out uh honestly the way i look at it is if i don't have to buy the new console i'm not going to gotcha. the only reason i went to the playstation 4 and xbox one is because you had to have them to play some of the new games and if they're not going to be required to do that personally to me just upgrading graphics and all that stuff isn't going to be worth it yeah i wonder how much this is going to hurt their bottom line if if people make those kinds of decisions like do they wait for it to come down in price or do they not pick it up at all if they're happy with their with their older console um we had a we had a question in chat uh, from TIE Fighter. He asked, uh, is this the last generation of the console war? No? <laughs> no. The fanboys create uh, console wars. There's always going to be the Xbox fanboy, PC, Nintendo. Well, PC is not a part of it, but you know what I'm saying. Everybody's going to fight for whatever they like the most. Right. I, I kind of I kind of want to see, and and this this is not so much consoles, but, you know, we were talked about exclusives, you know, I feel like uh, Sony's got the baseball market on lockdown with the MLB, the show. I feel like uh, Microsoft could maybe make a, uh, a dent in that if they went after, if they went after the show symphonic, you, you are a baseball fan. Do you play uh, baseball games? I don't play any sports games. No. Back in the day I played uh, like Madden or NCAA football. I had no mm-hmm. idea what I was doing. <laughs> I, I enjoy other games. <laughs> I so, just like watching it. Uh, yes, and that's a good point. Xbox and PS4s are practically CPUs now and just at a lower price point. Uh, that, is a very, that is a very good point. Uh, TIE Fighter also thinks he's the best Mad player in chat. I, I think some people would probably, uh, probably well, take a little... Uh, I don't play Mad, and so you can take that role. <laughs> you can... <laughs> now now that we're into uh uh the new decade here um seven of the 10 best selling games of the decade were call of duty games um and uh uh that are in that top 10 that weren't uh call of duty you had GTA 5 at the very top um, you had Red Dead Redemption 2 and Minecraft. Um, now, GTA was obviously like a mega hit. Red Dead Redemption 2 actually hasn't even really been out that long. And Minecraft is, you know, loved by many. Um, so kind of when I looked at this, it was like, you know, obviously no wonder they make these games every year and, and push a new one out. It feels like constantly. Um, what do you guys, and Bermai, this one's for you. What is it about the, the first person shooter genre and particularly call of duty, uh, that makes it such a dominant force in the gaming world? Uh, I think most first person shooters do a better job at making it to where for online play, it's a little more of either knowledge of the game or skill, and sadly that does include camping in there. <laughs> you do have to have some knowledge of the game to be able to camp properly. Sure. Uh, but it just kind of requires you having a mix of those two to actually be good at the game, and people want to know they're good at the game because they're good, not because they have some 
super easy thing to use or it's just super broken. Do you, do I mean, you guys go ahead? Uh, people still, of course, love doing that, but yeah. you know, that's just, I think that people prefer the first person shooters because it's more skill based than what like uh, GTA online or something would be like. Now, when I look at games that that come out every year, it's kind of like, you know, you look at like the 2K games with sports. Uh, we've talked about on recent episodes uh, the trouble that uh, they've had with the the last uh, 2K uh, wrestling game. Uh, and it kind of feels like many of these games that get pushed out every year, like they're they're kind of pumping out, you know, subpar stuff. But obviously... Call of Duty is not doing that to at least a point. Um, do you really see kind of any end in sight for that? Or what is it? My real question is, what does it mean for game developers that want to make original games and and not just crank out this kind of stuff? Like, what, what do you think? And Symphonic, you can go ahead and answer this. Like, what do you think is kind of... Uh, the incentive for developers to t- kind of move in another direction. Hmm. I'm not real sure <clears throat> on that. Cause like looking at those games, this what's standing out to me is of all those shooters is that it's with them being multiplayer. That's been the big focus on mm-hmm. their success. It's each game is just kind of building on it. Even though it's kind of the same, it's slightly building on it. Yeah. But I'm not real sure how they can make something new that has the same impact. Because I'm still kind of stumped at how Call of Duty is still going strong. Because the last Call of Duty I played was Black Ops 1. And I was terrible at it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I I'm stopped playing. Uh, yeah, and that's a good point, uh, Ty, is that uh, we, have a, we have a game... Uh, in GTA 5 that kind of sits at the top of the totem pole there. And what what do you think it is about that game in particular, guys, that kind of puts it ahead of this like juggernaut, basically, that Call of Duty is? Well, they have like good advertising. They market it very well. Mm-hmm. And you can show, see the major upgrades compared to GTA 4 to GTA 5. You get super hyped. The new cars, the environment, the graphics... And the more stuff you can do with Call of Duty, it's just very casual friendly because, like Bermib said, all you have to do is camp and aim for the most part. And Call of Duty doesn't have a ranked system, so it's very casual friendly for new players to hop in. You can hop in any game and learn very quickly. Okay, so you think it that plays a lot into it? You can kind of just sit down and and jump right in and and sort of just hang out with your buds and play some Call of Duty makes it a little more accessible to maybe the general gamer yeah. population. Yeah, most definitely. And this Modern Warfare that just came out is cross-platform, so a lot more people wanted to get that also. It's just want to play with your buddies with an easy, non-hardcore game. Yeah, and I, that's something else, too, is I, you know, I hope to see all games be cross-platform as much as possible. I know Sony's a little... Uh, a little weird about that but it is uh it is nice to be able to uh play with uh, like rocket league for instance i can play with anybody really uh by rocket id um or uh and i hope soon De- dead by daylight as well it would be nice to get a uh, good uh, cross platform on it uh so moving into some entertainment news guys um and i don't i don't know if you got maybe you do remember this uh, but uh, there is a writer strike apparently looming in Hollywood. Uh, more than a decade after uh, writers shut down, Hollywood studios and networks are once again preparing for another potential walkout that could disrupt Southern California's highest profile industry. Uh, the last writer strike happened <clears throat> back in 2007. Uh, then Hollywood was sort of just entering the digital revolution that would uh, kind of upend the old model. Uh, with Netflix kind of moving, making its pivot from their uh, DVD rentals into uh, streaming on the internet, and Hulu going live just as the strike ended. 
uh, I know for me, it, like as a content consumer, uh, I would be disappointed to see it happen just because, you know, I want to have good stuff to watch. But as somebody who creates content, uh, it seems like it would be a good opportunity to seize. And I don't know if if you guys knew this or if you maybe you haven't even seen it, but most people probably have. I, I know that Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog was one of the major things that uh, that happened kind of online at that time and sort of came out during that writer's strike. And we sort of saw um, really the uh, sort of Felicia Day go from not, not unknown, but she became sort of a, a nerd icon uh, because of that. Um, so Symphonic, what do you see... Uh, as the implication for both Hollywood and for independent creators as a result of a strike like this? I honestly have no idea. I haven't really... This is kind of a topic that's just kind of with me. It's yeah. It's like like Dr. Horrible's sing-along vlog. Is like, I know of it. I've just never seen it. So I don't... I just don't it's really awesome. know. It's awesome. I recommend it. <laughs> I, I seem to recall being recommended to watch it way back when it was fairly new. I think you would enjoy it. Um, so, well, but I mean, you watch TV, right? So, as a as somebody who watches TV, I mean, what what do you think will change about the landscape if a writer strike happens and kind of just sort of hangs there? Do you think people will turn away from that traditional programming and things? You know, maybe there's an opportunity on YouTube for people to move in on. Uh, maybe uh, we could uh, get more people to come watch uh, the Adventures of Red Baron on uh, the Elevate YouTube channel. <laughs> I mean, you guys are all streamers. You're all content creators. What what would be your plan uh, if a writer strike happened to try to capitalize on it? Definitely stream a lot more late at night with my ASMR because people like to come at late at night and uh, go to sleep through my streams for some reason <laughs> <laughs> no jump scares right yes there's no jump scares <laughs> nope so so do you guys remember this happening i know you're all you're all probably a little bit younger when the first writer strike happened is it something that uh that you remember no no nope no, nope. <laughs> I can remember it happening because I was a big fan of the show Heroes, and uh, it went off in like the middle of the second season. I guess I'm just an old guy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh... we don't know what a writer strike is, Tatsu. It's when the uh, the studio writers uh, in Hollywood go on strike, and they uh, they they cease to write TV shows. Yeah the uh, the dates that in this article what we have. It's like 2007, 2008, and I was in middle mm -hmm. school. Yeah. So I was more yes. concerned about video games than Hollywood. <laughs> Same. Same. So uh, here's another uh, little uh, uh, entertainment news nugget, and I thought this was interesting. Uh, Disney is actually dropping the Fox name from their newly acquired uh, property. So Disney closed uh, last year or early this year on a $71 billion deal to acquire Fox Searchlight and 20th Century Fox. However, Fox itself has still retained uh, some of its independence with Fox Entertainment, Fox Sports, Fox News. Uh, they don't fall under the Disney umbrella. Um, in an effort to separate the two entities, Disney is going to be rebranding re 20th Century Fox uh, as 20th Century Studios, it will also rebrand Fox Searchlight as Searchlight Pictures. Uh, it's unknown so far if any other significant changes will be made to the iconic logo or sound, uh, with Disney and Fox continuing to kind of argue over the rights to Spider-Man. Um, Burmai, uh, what do you think this means for the future of the two brands? I know you're, you're big into the Disney news, so what do you think this means for them? Uh, I think that... This could be a, a kind of big step for Disney. Uh, if they're able to get this more to be named after something that they create the name for, it could potentially help them out. Of course, rebranding it could also lose them some business. 
what it, what do you think uh symphonic about the uh about the name changes well i don't know <laughs> it seems to me like i it's just it's just a matter of kind of wanting to to make it their own i don't know that that the uh the properties really will change because of it um yeah i'm not I, real sure what fox brought to the disney brand i'm guessing there's some ips that were like under fox's umbrella x-men that they were yeah. x-men that x-men. were licensed to disney to do their thing yeah but, fantastic four is actually another one as well and they just want to improve upon their mcu after some scenes and characters in after endgame because some of them aren't going to be in there we need more heroes and plus deadpool also Okay. So so really Spider Man is gonna be the big sort of uh arguing point between the two, it sounds like who who kinda Yes. So um I guess Spider Man is actually owned by Sony, so I think uh if they can get uh if they can get a hold of that, uh they'd be able to kinda complete their uh complete their universe there. Um so yeah, like I said, I don't really know that that changes a whole lot for them, really, other than they uh, they sort of kind of cut the competition out a little bit. They're sort of uh, gaining gaining for their monopoly um, or world domination, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Fox was um, a long time ago, before it was Fox 20th, 20th Century. It was just called 20th Century before that, so doesn't really change that much to be honest yeah they're probably just wanting to go into the 21st century yeah (laughs) Yeah. might as well change it uh so so speaking of disney um according to reports from thr now i'm gonna probably botch the uh the pronunciation of this name taika waititi uh of thor directorial renown uh, has been approached by Disney to develop a Star Wars film. Uh, the THR article, uh, and that's the Hollywood Reporter, um, goes on to state that not much else is known regarding how far along Disney and he uh, have gotten in the discussions, um, but he isn't the only uh, Marvel alum to be approached for a Star Wars film. Back in September, uh, it was revealed that the uh, Marvel chief creative officer uh, and uh, Marvel Universe mastermind Kevin Feig would bring his talents to a new Star Wars franchise. Uh, Tofu, what's your what's your take on the MCU directors and kind of these guys uh, making their way into the Star Wars nebula? Uh, and do you think the two projects are related, or do you think they're separate? I <laughs> I totally think it's totally separate. But yeah, Kevin Feige will probably make like a huge Star Wars leap with the Nebula universe because he knows how to put together different movies and form into like one giant epic saga, I I guess, like a huge 20 movie Star Wars franchise. Would you guys like that with different characters? Like maybe kind of help sort of wind a a larger continuity together kind of thing? Yes, like there's non-Jedi characters and then Sith characters that can like just a whole bunch of different possibilities with the star wars so like a star wars cinematic galaxy because it's in the galaxy far far yeah. away yes, yeah exactly <laughs> not necessarily universe, universe. It's just a galaxy because it's, <laughs> it's, it's just one just far far away now uh Bermib, do you think that these uh these will be like disney plus exclusives do you think we're going to see more cinematic releases or do you think this is going to be maybe more adapted for the smaller screen I think they're going to go for uh, probably they're probably going to try and follow if all of their current Disney Plus exclusive like TV shows works out. They're probably going to keep putting out a bunch towards that. But I also think that they're probably going to try like he said with the Star Wars uh universe galaxy thing. Uh <laughs> they might try and do that in theaters and everything. Because that would probably be more profitable in the long run than just throw it onto Disney Plus, right? And I and I mean I'd like to see kind of a kind of a mix of both, maybe 
maybe we get some of the uh, the larger arc, arcing stories, you know, through through a new set of movies, and maybe get some of the more uh, gritty details and sort of uh, uh, side stories uh, on the on the Disney Plus channel. I think that would be probably a good way for them to approach it. You know, kind of a multi multi pronged approach. Uh, really, and just kind of, kind of continuing their dominance through it, because I mean, Star Wars and the Marvel, the Marvel universe is, uh, it's a lot of uh, the uh, the landscape right now is kind of just controlled by Disney. Uh, what do you guys think? What's going to be the next thing that sort of, sort of comes out and challenges them? As far as, do you think DC is going to make a run at it, or do you think we'll see? maybe uh, some original shows and movies come out and maybe take a run at them. I'd imagine they're probably going to have to figure out how to top a baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen tough. the Mandalorian, but I've seen all the memes. There are plenty of them. I, yeah. And you know, that's going to be, that's going to be interesting to see if the popularity of that maybe makes it to the, uh, to the big screen. Cause I mean, you're, you're talking about, have, uh, have like a, rogue one or a solo but it's of yoda's story mm -hmm. is kind of more centered around like who is he where did he come from just who's yeah yoda. yeah maybe maybe we'll see more origin stories of like yoda and some of the other characters uh maybe a mace windu that kind of thing there's lots that they could do for sure i want uh, i want to see what happens to all the sif in the past because Apparently, in the stories, they all killed each other for power. That's why there's only like two people, two Siths or a few, compared to the Jedi. So, so you'd like to see a sort of uh, a dark side origin story, then? Yeah, that would be I interesting. I think a lot of people would probably be really interested in that. Uh, yeah, I know that'd I be kind of interesting, almost like a like an anti-hero arc in the, if it's not already in Star Wars, but a little more truer anti-hero like you got the bad guy but you're kind of like yeah go young palpatine <laughs> was he ever young was he ever young i don't know he just stay he went from old to like super, super old, old. <laughs> for a long life uh so i mean and and kind of alongside that i mean really we got a taste of uh some of the early uh uh roots of the jedi uh in the uh in the latest installment of movies so maybe we could see some of that as well uh i know i as a kid i liked the uh the rogue squad uh squadron books uh i wouldn't mind seeing something based around around those um but i think maybe they kind of retcon some of those out of the out of the current uh universe so i'm not sure what they would do with that all right guys uh so do you do you guys have anything that you would like to plug uh, as far as what you have going on on your own streams? Uh, Bermide, let's start with you. Uh, I don't know. Walt Wednesday, every Wednesday, whenever on this channel, in fact, you guys yep. could definitely check out. Now, you are not going to be on for the next few weeks, am I correct? Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, due to work and everything, I'm not going to be able to be on the stream. Uh, as of right now, it looks like just the next three, maybe four weeks. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so do you know who we have in store for the next couple of weeks that will be joining Jazzy for Walt Wednesday? I believe we have Eminent Stump lined up for one week. Mm -hmm. uh, TIE Fighter X1, I think... I heard her say we'll be on there and Hey, Mr. Tofu over there will be on there. Excellent. Excellent. I am looking forward to that. So you say that three or four weeks, so there may be a fourth week, uh, opening up, uh, symphonic. Would you be interested in Walt Wednesday on that fourth week? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually I, pretty I, busy during that time slot. I am as well, and uh, I know that uh, it would be a lot of fun to to talk Disney with Jassy. So if you guys, if you guys are new uh, to the Elevate channel, we do have Walt Wednesday every Wednesday at seven, uh, where um, Jazzy and normally Bermai, but this week Eminent Stump uh, discuss kind of all your Disney news as well as talk about the history of some Disney movies. I think this week they're going to be talking about Peter Pan. 
which is really awesome. Uh, so Symphonic, when are we going to see you live next on Twitch? Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Okay. I've been asked as a possibility very, very soon. Very, very soon? As in, I don't know, in half an hour. Half an hour? <laughs> Whenever like we finish. It. So, so yeah. So, let's... Uh, we're uh, hopefully going to raid out uh, after this to Symphonic. So, Symphonic, if you want to get ready to go. Oh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm being told in my ear that we got something. Uh, so cool night off. <laughs> <laughs> He's not upset about that, as you can tell. <laughs> but uh, we definitely want to uh, want to see more of your streams, man. So. Uh, yeah. Get that schedule going. Yeah, I am slowly making my way towards the uh, affiliate requirements. Let's get you there. And let's get you on streamer spotlight. I lost all my uh, stream time because things happened. Yeah. Christmas is a busy season, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Christmas and catching a cold for about a week. Yeah. Really threw off what I was wanting to do. But I'm I'm 20 followers away from the minimum mark. So if... uh, so go give that guy a follow, guys. If you haven't already, he's only needs 20 more followers. So go get him. Uh, can we get a shout out for him? I think you are, probably already did, but let's get another one. And Mr. Tofu, my friend, tell us what you got going on. Just my Twitch and my um, social medias. My Twitch name is Hey Mr. Tofu, and my social medias is also Hey Mr. Tofu. But you guys should definitely follow this Elevate channel. They're pretty cool. They're fun to watch and definitely give some fun to follow. We help them reach affiliate. Thank For you. sure. We got to get uh, get you on Streamer Spotlight uh, next season, guys, uh, if you haven't already been on. I think, for my view, you've been on, but uh, Tofu and Symphonic, we definitely want to want to see you there. Um, so, guys, uh, make sure you give them all a follow uh, and check out what they have for us. Uh, you can also follow us on uh, on Twitch here, obviously, but we have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, if you give exclamation point social socials in the uh, chat there, you can find us across the board. We have uh, YouTube videos coming out uh, as well uh, every week or two. Uh, so check that out and give us those likes and follows also uh pretty soon now i don't have this in the notes but pretty soon we are going to have uh our podcast including this show walt wednesday streamer spotlight and and many more to come uh will be available on all the major podcasting platforms uh stitcher google play um apple podcasts uh and spotify uh, so make sure uh, give us a follow on there. It will greatly help us uh, kind of spread our reach out there um, and get more eyes on our stuff or ears. Um, so if you would like to be a guest or you have a topic that you would like to hear discuss, you can hit us up on Twitter or you can shoot me an email to zazabu at elevatestreams.com. Uh, any articles or things you'd like me to talk about, send them my way. I will be more than happy to take a look uh, and kind of as a last uh, a last sort of message, Zyroth, if you see this, we love you and we support you. Guys, right there in the middle of the screen, we have Zyroth.ElevateStreams.com. That is a link to the, uh, to the GoFundMe for our good friend Zyroth, who's going through some personal issues. We like to really try to help him out. If you don't want to donate to the GoFundMe, but you'd still like to get a donation his way, you can hit the PayPal there. That's paypal.me slash elevate streams. We will make sure that that gets to him. Uh, I think we'll also pretty soon, there is a design being worked on for a t-shirt for Zyroth and the proceeds from that when it is released will also go to the GoFundMe. And that GoFundMe is actually to help him uh, get to the UK uh, where we, he has uh, some, some good friends that are going to be uh, taking him in and um, helping him on his recovery. So thank you very much. If you've already donated Uh, it's much appreciated and uh, thank you for the sub symphonic. 
two months. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you if you've already donated. Uh, and just thank you for your support and your thoughts and prayers for him as well. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, and I am told that we're actually going to be raiding out to Ghost Fighter X1. So make sure you hang out and watch his first stream back uh, in what's it been? Three or four months. Uh, he had a long journey and a big move and he is back. So let's go give him some love and support guys. Thank you very much and have a good night. Goodbye. And good night. Bang.